I want to move very fast by the message of God. I want to share my thoughts with you on a message I've called the Ignoramus Christian. The what? Ignoramus Christian. I had to go and check the dictionary to confirm that. You know, we say it a lot, Ignoramus. It's true. Ignorant. Tell your neighbor, are you an Ignoramus Christian? Uh, ask now. Are you an Ignoramus Christian? Ignoramus Christian. Ah, uh, I will tell you, Pastor Yinka. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. I want to build on the message the senior pastor preached last week when he spoke about the devil. And about the fact that what the devil cares about or what, it, what the devil's main agenda is, is anti-God. So anywhere God is, the devil opposes. Do we understand that? No, do you really understand that? Let me bring it down. I'm a Barcelona fan. I can never support Real Madrid. Am I making sense? When they are playing, I am wishing them the worst. Break your leg, break your neck. Those, am I making sense? You can't be an Arsenal fan and say you're supporting Chelsea. Is it possible? You are anti Chelsea, true or false? You can't be a United fan. Man City is playing, you are happy they are winning. Does it make sense? The same thing with the devil. Do you understand me? He's anti God. Worse. Everywhere God is, is against it. Anything God supports is against it. Anything to move the kingdom forward, he will work against it. Oh, any life committed to God, oh my God, is unto you. I'm not making sense, you see. He doesn't want your family to walk. Why? You're going to give it to godly children. He doesn't want it. Oh, does he want the choir to be united? No. Because if you're united, guess what? You're ministering, changing lives. He doesn't want it. Am I making sense? He wants strife, envy, anything to make it not work. Am I making sense to somebody? You need to understand that. I think many of Christians, we try and hide. As long as you're a Christian, the enemy, Satan, works against you. Works against your children. Listen, listen. He doesn't care, Pastor Inka, if you're a billionaire. He can even give you the billions. As long as you're not using it for God. You think devil cares that you have money or that child. Oh, he wants you to be influential as long as the influence is using what? Used against God. Doesn't care about your affluence or your influence. As long as it's not for God. So if you are influential and move influencing for God is anti you. Am I making sense? If you don't know that, you're an ignoramus Christian. If you don't understand that, if you don't understand that, then you're ignorant. Then this scripture is for you. Second Corinthians 10, sorry, Second Corinthians verse 2, 10 to 11. Quickly. Second Corinthians verse 2, 10 to 11. Can I have that quickly, media? So we can all read here. Yeah. To, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sakes, forgive it. For, forgive I, it in the person of Christ. 11, where I'm going. Listen. One, two, three, let's read together. The reason I forgive is lest Satan should get what? Of who? For we are not what? 
Of what? It means if you are ignorant of his devices, he will have an advantage over you. Simple. If you are ignorant of the devices of Satan, of the devil, he will have what? An advantage over you. Now, is he going to use that advantage positively or negatively? Am I right? So if you don't want him to have an advantage over you, you must what? You must understand the what? The wiles, his method, his style. The way he does his things. So you know why? So we are going through something. Ah, ah, ah. This is the style. It's a device. It's a method. You are fighting your brother. Who is happy? Who is happy? But you don't know. It's a device. Oh, he said something. No, it's a device. It's a strategy. It's a plan. That's why Jesus said, Peter, he said, get behind me, Satan. Oh, what's Peter, Satan? He knew that at that time, at that time, Satan was influencing Peter. At that time, he understood the devices of the enemy. He knew the way he walked. He could sense it. Oh, Peter was, um, Paul was preaching. They went somewhere and this girl came. He said, follow them. They are the men of God. They are the men. After some days, Paul said, nah, 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 nah. This is, this, is, this is not from God. This is a device of the enemy. Am I making sense? You see, if you don't understand the way he works, he will have an advantage over you. And guess what? It's a bad devil. He has come to kill to steal and to destroy. He will never leave you. Don't, once he has an advantage, he will press it home. He will not leave you till he kills, till he steals, till what? When he finishes, he will not move on. That is why you cannot allow him to have what? An advantage over you. So you and I must understand the devices, the way he works. So he can be sensitive and say, no, 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 no. This is not from God. No, no, no. This is a device. No, I'm not fighting. What is going on here? I fell out with somebody recently. And I told that person. I sent him a message. I said, listen, listen. If there's schism between brothers, who is happy? Is it God? If there's a schism between me and you, who is happy? It's the devil. It's a device. Oh, that issue. It's not the issue. It's a device. It's a ploy. So you and I must be what? Sensitive. Am I making sense? Praise the Lord somebody. So as Apostle Paul said, lest Satan, lest Satan should take advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices of his methods, of his plans, of the way he works. We're not. We mustn't. As Christians, we must be sensitive. You must always ask yourself, there's strife in your home. Who is happy? Am I making sense? Praise the Lord, somebody. An, an ignoramus means an ignorant person. Or somebody that lacks knowledge in a particular place, area. To be ignorant means to ignore. It has to do with knowledge. If you ignore the devil, he's at your own peril. That's why I tell people you can ignore a fact, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring that fact. Does that make sense? You can ignore what? A fact. But you cannot ignore what? The consequences of ignoring that fact. So, a lot of us are ignoring things in our life. No problem. But the consequence of ignoring it, you can't ignore that. Same thing with the devil. 
You can try and live your life if it doesn't exist. Eh? But okay, you can't ignore the consequences of that. Because if you are unaware of his devices, he will have what? An advantage over you. And because he's a wicked being, he will use that advantage fully to destroy you. May we not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Are you Okay. But let me say one or two things quickly about Satan so you don't, there's nothing to be scared about. It's not about him. It's about God. But let, you should know your adversary. Satan was created as a holy angel. You know that. Before his fall, his name was Lucifer. You know that. Isaiah 14, 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations. Satan's pride led to his fall because of his sin. God permanently removed Satan from his exalted position and role. Satan became the ruler of the world and the prince of the power of the air. He's an accuser. He's a tempter. He's a deceiver. He's a murderer. That's who he is. He can't change. He can't change. He can't change again. You and I can still change. He can't change. That's who he is. Are you with me? Okay. He's a liar. His name means adversary or one who opposes. He will do anything and everything in his power to oppose God or those who follow God. However, Satan's destiny is sealed and eternity in the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verse 10. But be of good cheer. That's who he is. But guess what? Satan is not all powerful. He's not what? He's not. He's not all powerful. He's not. In Job 1 verse 6 to 12, he wanted to attack Job. He had to take permission from God to do it. So you are safe. He wanted to attack Job. He said, please, can you remove the hedge around him? I can't touch him. You are untouchable in Jesus' name. Make sure you don't break the edge. He had to, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said please, he said. Then the Lord said to Satan, let's, let's look at it quickly. Job 1, 6 to 12. Okay, come to them, see 9. No, no, no. Yeah. Yes, 9. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. A hedge around him, around his household, around everything he has. You have blessed the work of his hands. Our hands, the work of our hands will be blessed. And his possessions have increased in the land. 11. But now, stretch out your hand and touch him and all that he has. And he will surely cost you to your face. 12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that you have in is your power. Only do not lay hand on his person. So we know that Satan is not all powerful. Because if it was all powerful, he wouldn't need permission. Am I making sense? We also know that Satan is not all knowing. He doesn't know all things. Don't be deceived. He doesn't know the future. He can... Because he has been around for a long time, he can say this is Mr. Violet. I think she will do well because she's following God. He can do permutations, but he doesn't know the future. He doesn't. He doesn't know the future. The future is in God. That's why scripture said in 1 Corinthians, it said, however, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 to 8, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery. The hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of the age knew. For had they known, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known, they would have killed Jesus. They don't know. They don't know. Praise the Lord, somebody. And it's not many presents. He's not everywhere at the same time. Only God is omnipresent. 
He's not. Oh, he has demons everywhere. He can create confusion in many places, but he's not everywhere at the same time. Only God is. So be of good cheer. Nothing to fear. All we need to know is to understand that he has devices. He has strategies. He has a way he works. There's a way he works. So you need to understand that and see it so you can be guarded. So you can see that, no, no, this is not from God. No, this is not normal. So it doesn't have an advantage over you and I. Praise the Lord. So let me share with you quickly seven devices, ploys, or methods, or ways that the devil uses to take advantage of you and I. How does he do it? I'll show you from scriptures. You can see from scriptures how the way he does it, the method he uses, he doesn't change. He doesn't change it, but he keeps using it. He deploys it very well, consistently. He's never tired. He's never weary. He's always going to and fro, looking for who to devour. What a life. What a life. <laughs> restless, restless being. Hallelujah. The devil always tries to derail us from our purpose and our mandate on earth with many crafty devices. So many people have been deceived about the actual works of the devil or his actual mission here on earth. One of the ways he does, number one, by elevating our physical and material needs. By elevating our what? Physical and material needs. Oh, I know you need something in your life. Oh, I know you need a job. I know you have physical and material needs. The devil plays, if you're not careful, it's a device. Because of your physical and material needs, he can pierce you. He came to Jesus when he was hungry. He said, turn these stones into bread. If he had come when he was not hungry, would that be a temptation? No. Am I making sense? He came when he was fasting. He be taken by Jesus. Jesus was hungry. And he came. Hey, what's up? Ah, he said you can do it. Turn this stone into bread. Do you have challenges in your life? Material challenges. Be careful. Don't let the enemy use that to gain advantage of you. You start cutting corners. You start doing what you know you shouldn't do it. You start changing papers. You start writing checks you should not write. It's, it's not new. Elevating your physical and material needs. Matthew 4 verse 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. He was targeting Jesus' physical needs. What he needed now. I need to pay my rent now. Oh. But Jesus answered him, man shall not live by bread alone. Hallelujah. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Lord will give you an answer in Jesus' name. You see, you need to be careful. You need to be, the enemy doesn't change. When there is a need, eh, it's a device, he comes. Look at the stupid Esau. He was hungry. And his brother said, give me your birthright. Whenever I read that scripture, I'm always very angry. I've always said if I was one, I would beat him. Oh, <laughs> You need to be careful. It's a device of the enemy. It's the way it works. The things you need, the things you crave, the challenge you have is a way to, is a way to pierce you. Be careful. So check your life. What are the physical needs that are material needs that you need in your life? So what is the phone? You want that new phone. You can do anything for it. Am I making sense to somebody? It's the enemy. It's the devil. It's his device. He used it on Jesus. He's still using it today, 2,000 years after. It doesn't change. 
He just repackages it. So this time is phone. Oh, this time is car. It is something you need. It doesn't change. Be careful. Number two. Oh, let me. Number two. Another device. Desire for power and glory hasn't changed. Man is man. Desire for what? Why are we killing ourselves, stabbing ourselves? Desire for power and glory. Many of us have sacrificed our destiny on the altar of popularity. Did you hear that? Many of us. We've sacrificed our destiny or not on the altar of popularity. Altar of money. Jesus was entering Jerusalem. He said, let's make him king. Hosanna, Hosanna. He ran away. Nah, I'm going to the cross, not to the palace. Many of us would have taken what? The palace and thrown away the what? The cross. Who myself, I won't lie. Now, ah! I said, no, I'll marry my wife to the palace and move on. No, Jesus said, no. Many times they wanted to make him king. He fed the 5,000. But he knew, I will not satisfy, I will not sacrifice my destiny on the altar of what? Popularity. Faith. Matthew 4, 8 to 9. Again, the devil took him up to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. I will give it all to you. Many of us are sacrificing our lives, our destinies, our future, our children on the altar of glory. This temptation appealed to worldly glory and power. But Jesus again refused by citing scriptures. He said, worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Deuteronomy 6, 6 verse 13. Another study of that was King David when he took the census of his people. In 2 Samuel 24 verse 1 to 25 and 1 Chronicles 21, 1 to 30. Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So David said to Joab and to the leader of the people, Go, number Israel from Bathsheba to Dan and bring the number to me that I may know. Glory. Glory. David wanted to feel, <laughs> you know, I'm a big boy. Uh -uh. Look at my people. Look at how many people I have under my command. And God said, Nah, did I send you? Did I send you that one? The enemy has not changed. Satan has not changed. That is the way he gets an advantage over us. Am I making sense? Be careful. Glory. Glory. Fame. There's nothing wrong in aspiring. But make sure your aspirations are rooted in Christ. That's the only way. You know why? Listen. You know, one of the things about politicians, people say that they can backstab anybody. You know why? Because as far as they're concerned, man, I mean, anything to be me here. But that cannot be us. So as Christians, it can't can be us. Because most politicians, they have no red line. They will do anything. But if Christians, you can't be like that. You can say, man, I, I can't do this one. This one. I can't do it. Ma'am, the Lord bless you. I'm going home. Because for us, our hope does not end here. If in this world only we have hope, then we have all men most miserable. It doesn't end here. Never forget that it doesn't end here. For many people, we end here. It doesn't end here for us. We have a hope. We have eternity to look forward to. So one of the ways the devil gets advantage of us 
is playing into our need, our desire for, for power and glory. Be careful. Ooh. The third way he does it is the misuse or distortion of scriptures. The misuse or distortion of scriptures. Why do you think there's so much confusion in the church today? Who is behind it? Think about it. This one is preaching this one, and that one is preaching this one. This one is saying this one, and that one is doing design. And I want, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, you see videos, mad videos, crazy videos. I don't, mad videos. Pastor, pastor female pastors, mad. I, I mean, I'm like, what is this? It's the devil. It's his devices. He wants to scatter. That's it. So, you need to be sensitive. So, when you say, ah, this is a device. This is a ploy. This is a strategy. And why is he doing it? To scatter. Don't forget, I told you, what is anti-God. Anti-God. But be of good cheer. The church will keep moving on. And the gates of hell will not prevail in the name of Jesus. Misuse of scriptures. Misuse of scriptures. Misuse of scriptures. In Psalm 91, he misquoted Psalm 91 to Jesus. Told him that. He said, Jesus said, you know, he said what? He said, jump down from this, from this place. He said he has given his angels charge over you. He said, no, 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 no. He said, Lord, God said, do not test the Lord your God. I'm not jumping down to prove you that God is God. I'm not going to test my God. I'm not going to do it. So whenever you see people, you, so you should know that this is the devil. This is a ploy. Always know that. You sense it. When you see in church, scriptures, people trying to play down morality in church, it's not God. It's the devil. Praise the Lord, somebody. Number four, deception. Satan is subtle, crafty and cunning, full of wiles. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The, the wiles of the devil. The attack on the first family was deception. The first family, Adam and Eve, was deception. I mean, it was deception. Did God say deception? Deception. And that deception, we are here today. We are here today. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. He still deceives. That's all he has. Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said. Deception. I said here that your family may be under attack without you knowing and for most of us, we had family. We had a family altar. We prayed for families on Thursday. Most of we didn't come. We had a fantastic time. We had a fantastic time. I'm telling you, don't miss the next one in Jesus' name. Number five, let me move. Doubt. Doubt is a device. A doubt. Place it in your heart. You start questioning everything. You question everything. A word comes from the pulpit. It is well with you. You will prosper this week. As I did normally say. You've missed it. You've missed it. You've missed it. You've missed it. This is your month of conquest. You've missed it. It's spiritual. He knows. He sows doubt in your mind. Peter was walking on water. He was walking on water. He said, Master, if that be you, 
bid me to come. He said, come. And the Bible said, he started to walk. Then he looked away. And Jesus said, why did you doubt? That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, why did you what? Doubt. Let me show you. Why did you doubt? Oh, God. Matthew 14, 25 to 33. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, is I. Do not be afraid. <laughs> he trusts Peter like a guy. He's a sharp guy. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Ah, come. And when Peter came down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Ah. But like fella, when he saw that the wind was boisterous, ah, all that day, ah, you know, jelly. he were walking already now. But when he saw, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, save me. Even when we are crying, God will still save us when we make mistakes. He didn't say, there is a people that is drowned there. He didn't say that. He said, Lord, save me. Give me the next verse. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you, 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 oh, oh, you of little faith, why did you what? The devil still uses it now today. That's not changed. That's not changed. That's not changed. It will not change. James 1, 5 to 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without what? No, no wavering, no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he can receive anything from God because a double-minded person is unstable in what? You can't get anything done. And devil knows. So what's every word that comes? This is your year of... You just throw doubt. You mix it with doubt. It's gone. You're double-minded. Come and pray. You'll come this week. You'll come next week. Come to church. You'll come one week. You'll come another week. That's not stable. God blesses. St stability is important. Life rewards consistency. <laughs> I'm telling you, life does what? Rewards consistency. When you're happy, you are here. When you're not happy, you are here. When you're depressed, you are here. When you're not depressed, you are here. Life rewards it. How much more God Almighty? Zacharias, as was the man now, he went to pray for the people again. He had done it for donkey years. And that day, God appeared. Imagine he didn't go that day. Oh Lord, Joe, I'm tired. It's raining. It's raining, Joe. I'm coming, Joe. I beg you. Why are they going to preach even? Double-minded. Doubt. Praise the Lord. Oh, my time is long gone. Number six, right? Am I right? Is that six? Yeah. Another ploy of the enemy, of, this, of Satan, is to appeal to our desires and our weaknesses. He knows them. You know, he knows man. He understands our frame. He, under he has been around forever. He understands us. He knows how to play those cards. You know, I'm telling you. Some years I can never forget. I can never, I can never forget. That's why I have to be careful. That's why I started working on my anger. When that thing got me into trouble, eh? In fact, bad you are Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ask my wife. I said, Lord, I I said, Lord, please forgive me. Help me this time. I promise you. I promise you. When I, I was going to church. 
years ago. I was just staying in Magodo. And you women, may the Lord help us with my wives. I call my wife. I say, I, I don't want to miss Wednesday service. I will come and pick you at this time. I told her before I left the house. She was working from home. She wasn't going, she wasn't going to work that day. I called the girl around 12. Please, sweetheart, I hope you don't forget that I'll be coming at 4 o'clock. So I won't forget. Thank you. I called again one hour before. I'll be leaving very soon to pick you up at 4 o'clock. Please ensure that you're ready. I'll just stay by the gates and I'll, you just come out. I said, please don't forget to ensure that there's generator in the fuel in case they take life. So you know those normal things. Kunle. But when I left the office, I'm on my way now. Please, I pick you. When I got there, I said, let's go. Say, ah, I've not bought petrol for the generator. Why ah, is she holding me full law? I just lost it. I said, what nonsense? But we still have to go and buy the petrol. So as we were going in the car, I was complaining and shouting. I was angry. I said, one guy was now parking in front of me. He was buying granots. Babala set up. You know, devil, Babala set up. So I was angry. I pressed on, pressed on. MC, I just come out. Get up. The guy, move, bing, bing. The guy was on the ground. I said, the guy, he was now bleeding from here. The guy just went straight to the police station. It was a lawyer. Who called a report? Ha! Money move Yeah, me see. Hey. Kunle. This thing. You know, and I could not tell anybody. I couldn't tell my dad. I, I knew people, but I was ashamed. We are a fella, fella, Christian brother, brother. I was in the pastor then. What that guy showed me, he said, I'm taking you to court. I'm suing you for 15 million. What is 15 million? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I beg. He said, No. If I had to go and look for somebody that knew him, I went to his office. I ate humble pie. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> From that day, I said, Yeah? I'm telling you. He was the enemy. Who set me up where? And I was ignorant of the devices. And he had an advantage over me. What if that guy had fallen down and just hit his head and died? What if he had fallen down his head and died? Will I be here? I'm telling you. I'm, that is the devices. I didn't sleep that night. But I zoo. I didn't sleep. I said, Lord, please. Praise the Lord, somebody. The enemy knows. Satan knows. That's what happened to Reuben. Our desires. He slept with his father's wife. You know the story. He never made progress in his life. He said, you will not excel. His desires. Solomon, because of the desire for foreign women, he had 700 wives, 300 concubines. <laughs> My God. The Bible said, <laughs> when I man, I want to meet, when I, when I get to heaven, I get Uncle, Uncle Solo. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> ah, we hear you, sir. But <laughs> ah, the one I have, I can't even manage this. One, one, I'm struggling. <laughs> I go to Remijo, I'm familiar with you. I'm telling you. Desires. He used it. And in the end, it didn't end well. You know the story of Solomon. God told him, I'm going to take the kingdom from you. I will not take it from you. I'll take it from your son because of your father. Why? Desires. Lost. And the last one I need to move. Strife and unforgiveness. That's not changed. You still using it? Strife and what? Wherever you see, First Corinthians fourteen forty, say, "Let all things be done in decency and in order." In order. Whenever you see chaos, strife, ah, you are fighting your brother. Who's enjoying that? Who's happy? There's strife in who's happy. The devil. Strife. 
on forgiveness. Let me leave you with this. Matthew 5, 23 24. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, means of violence, and you remember that your brother has something against you, don't get me wrong, you don't have anything against the brother. The brother has something against you. He said, you know what you do? He said, please, just hold out your offering. Just say, please, put it down. Go and make... Do you know how many of your offering that the church is spending it, God doesn't recognize it? Do you know how many offering we've given? That it, we're happy. Keep giving, please. Lord bless you. But as far as God is concerned, doesn't recognize the offering. Doesn't recognize it. Oh, the church accepts it. We say, Lord bless you. God bless you for giving. But as far as God is concerned, you gave nothing. You gave nothing. Praise the Lord, somebody. So church members, these are the devices of the enemy. There's so many more, I have to jump. These are the devices. He said, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. First John 3, 8. So he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So don't be, don't be scared. His works are destroyed in the name of Jesus. I just want us to be sensitive, to be deliberate, to be intentional. As you go about your, your Christian work, your Christian journey, always remember that the enemy wants to have an advantage over you. Just remember that. So in any situation you find yourself, just ask yourself, who has the advantage here? Who is happy with this situation? Husband and wife not talking in house for two weeks. Who is happy? Who is happy? Church members not greeting themselves. You see me, you go here. I see you, I go there. Or you are there, I just stop and say, I didn't see you. I'm checking my phone so you can pass. <laughs> Below the belt, Abby. Who is happy? Who is happy? Who is happy? Who has the advantage? Am I making sense to you? Father not talking to sons. Sons not talking to fathers. Who has the advantage? Who is happy? Who is enjoying it? Who? Brethren, we're not unaware of the devices of the enemy. Satan will not have an advantage over us. As you go into this week, I want you to be more deliberate, to be more sensitive to the spirit. Understand that there's a war going on in the spirit and that the devil is anti-God. And since you're for God, he's against you. But we are confident that the Lord that we serve will keep us. He will preserve us. He will sustain us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Put your hands together for Jesus.